You are listening to Machine Learning That Works, a podcast hosted by Neton AI. Hi everyone, this is Jakub Chakon, Senior Data Scientist at Neptun AI, and today I will be talking to Gabriel Preda. Gabriel is a lead data scientist at Endava and a Kaggle Grandmaster. We will be talking about NLP, Kaggle, and how to put yourself in a position to always be learning. Without further ado, my interview with Gabriel Preda. Well, I'm super happy to be here today with Gabriel Preda. Uh, Gabriel is a uh, lead data scientist at Endava, and uh, I'm super happy to have him on the show. Hi, Gabriel. Uh, hi. Hi, Jacob. How's it going? All good? Uh, yes. So, business as usual. Awesome. Awesome. Good to hear in those uh, troubled times. Uh, hopefully, everything is going uh, gonna to be good. Um, you know, pretty soon. Um, but we're not going to be talking about uh, we're not going to be talking about the current uh, situation. Uh, I'm I really want to pick your brain on uh, yeah on the things that you are absolutely incredible uh, at. But um, you know, before we do that, I would like uh, people listening to this to uh, you know to understand uh, what uh, you know what what are you working on. Uh, right now, and um, yeah, if you could talk about the projects and the team, uh, that would be absolutely great. Yeah, uh, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to this discussion. Uh, I'd like to start as well uh, by mentioning that, uh, as you know, I'm working for Enda, which is a uh, software service company, and uh, our projects are actually our client projects. and. Uh, uh, when I'll talk today about uh, what my activity is, uh, what projects I'm working on, uh, how the team uh, is structured, and uh, uh, the skills, tool sets, and uh, technologies we put in practice to answer to our client needs, uh, you'll understand, uh, I think it's uh, very easy to understand for everyone, that uh, I will have two uh, some yeah, but, uh, the details related uh, with uh, you know, the client business and the technologies and uh, of course. sometimes about the structure of the team as well. Whatever you can show. share, share it, but yeah. don't, don't, but, don't yeah. think So uh, let, let me start by saying that uh, Endava is uh, uh, working in most of the projects that we are uh, uh, delivering uh, for our clients in uh, multifunctional, let's call it, uh, feature teams. And uh, uh, this is not... Uh, uh, different from uh, uh, data projects in general and uh, also especially for data projects where we do have as well uh, uh, data science uh, or machine learning component. And uh, just to give an example, what that will mean uh, for a recent project uh, that we conducted uh, was in the industry. Uh, the main Endava team for this project included uh, a data architect, uh, a data analyst, one data engineer and a data scientist uh, for the POC uh, part and uh, for the second part where uh, we're supposed to put the project in production, we added the uh, DevOps and the uh, developer as well as a data scientist while uh, the other roles, uh, data analyst and uh, data engineering were just uh, part-time. Uh, so we started the focus on understanding the problem, generating uh, possible solution for the client and uh, uh, then when we stabilized to uh, one particular solution that uh, the client wanted us to implement in production, then we our focus turned from uh, uh, developing uh, original ideas to implementing. And so the structure of the team changed. And sometimes we start for other projects, uh, larger projects, say, uh, as well with a multifunctional team, uh, which... Again, if we are in this area where we uh, deal with uh, data science or machine learning problems, we'll still have a uh, data scientist, a data engineer, sometimes a data architect as well as a development, classical application development team. And it really depends on the, the way the, the project is structured and the, uh, the, the delivery. So uh, how close are we to delivering in the production? So if we are mm -hmm. approaching this moment, then for sure we'll have a, a full-blown development team around. And uh, sometimes the data scientist will be, let's say, in the economy of the project, rather a marginal uh, uh, role, 
uh, mm-hmm. than the, you know, the, the Kiro. Mm-hmm. And, the, and the projects that you're uh, working on mainly, the, the projects that you uh, uh, are solving and you know, creating for, developing for, for your clients, um, are those, uh, you know, is it that, uh, that you folks are focused on something, let's say, um, I don't know, forecasting, or maybe it's more on the vision side or NLP, uh, or is it sort of, uh, you know, uh, very, it can be very different, like, like, it, like one project could be this and the other would be that. Is there any focus uh, that, that you have, or uh, could you tell um, a bit about so that? I would like to say that, you know, uh, we have developed uh, special aptitudes or specialization in a certain field and uh, we are, uh, you know, uh, continuously developing these skills. But actually, uh, most of the time, we'll have to pick up the client problem, mm-hmm. understanding it and uh, coming up with a solution which not only uh, answer to the business uh, needs of the client, but also it's fitting to uh, the specific uh, environment. So there are mm-hmm. uh, cases when you have a full liberty, for example, you can build uh, our solution in cloud and we did implement the solution in both uh, Azure and uh, AWS. And sometimes we do have uh, some clients, uh, very strict restrictions, so we'll have to uh, build up uh, something uh, under a lot of constraints, uh, uh, solution on premises, and uh, uh, so the solution will have to adapt to these special conditions. When we come to the, let's say, the domain in the data science or machine learning, uh, we'll have to cover. Uh, I would say that generally, for many of our clients, we'll have to do a lot of NLP. And this is because uh, a lot of data from our clients will be in the form of stored uh, text information, uh, documents, uh, really depends on the business, and uh, of course, I will not be extremely specific here. But I will say that uh, we do a lot of NLP, and sometimes, because I mentioned, you know, uh, documents processing, it will be a combination of uh, computer vision and mm. NLP to extract various content from documents, uh, and you know, sometimes combining these. Uh, uh, techniques. Uh, so, so NLP would be like uh, post-processing to uh, some OCR system or things like that. Uh, this can uh, include these as well, uh, mm-hmm. but we'll not stop here. So it's about, uh, could be, for example, extracting text and then uh, extracting information. And here, again, we can use uh, certain already uh, existing NLP techniques, for example, to uh, extracting uh, a specific content that we want them to match to some uh, existing information. But uh, sometimes you need to be uh, extremely creative. And I can mention uh, here one uh, uh, one project where uh, actually the we had to let's say develop uh, techniques to cope with the very say uh, non-standard English, where uh, in which the text we had to uh, parse and uh, uh, interpret and uh, include in some models uh, so uh, done so this uh, there are some uh, reports uh, filtered by people mm-hmm. without necessarily a very good comment of english so we had to mm-hmm. uh, because in that project we also used the uh, word embeddings and uh, uh, lstm based uh, uh, deep learning solution to do a end of document classification we had to so uh, manually add uh, to the existing dictionary we are using uh, uh, in preparation to subject our uh, uh, text to word embeddings. Uh, additional terms that were not included in the word embedding, so it was uh, uh, rather tedious uh, mm-hmm. uh, manual work to do the you know extension of the correction dictionary. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you have to do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, dirty side of data science. <laughs> yeah, but I will not say dirty. It's the, the part that is less... Uh, Glamorous? Yeah, let's... Uh, talking about uh, when, you know, uh, for example, when you go to competitive uh, like modeling, you'll not encounter these uh, dirty data uh, sources. Uh, usually, if you get there, it's clean. And also, you know, when you read about solution on the, you know, some uh, community mm-hmm. uh, uh, sites or in, uh, you know, in uh, uh, papers, you'll not read too much about the tedious cleaning uh, process, but to, to say the truth, so also in other projects, I 
the one that I mentioned and other projects, uh, a lot of effort. It's about exploring the data, cleaning the data, preparing data uh, before even uh, starting to experiment with uh, models. And a lot of this work, it's also after you start to experiment with some models because that is, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's really a very long iterative uh, process. So, and, the, yeah, and, and, you do, and you do a lot of those uh, explorations. I, uh, that, that's how I, uh, I, I've come to, to, to know about uh, your, your work that was through some of the beautiful data explorations that you shared uh, with uh, people on uh, on on Kago, uh, can you you know is it is it uh, connected? Like, are you reusing those in your uh, regular work? Uh, is it sort of some some sort of a tool toolkit that you have that you're um, you know some parts you're using on your work? Uh, let's say that uh, I'll use and uh, typically I you know especially uh, talking about commercial product we are not reusing anything, uh, but uh, of course the uh, the knowledge you acquire uh, mm -hmm. doing. Uh, all kind of uh, exercises, uh, either you are publishing uh, content uh, on some uh, industry uh, journals or uh, sites or like you mentioned on Kaggle, these candles on Kaggle, uh, everything you are doing, also personal projects. Uh, I, I, now and then I also publish uh, some content on the GitHub. Everything you are doing, it's actually integrating and in time you acquire a lot of, you know, uh, solution or uh, a small uh, receipt that uh, you'll not copy and paste of course but you'll just mm -hmm. rethink mm -hmm. and uh, adapt for any new project mm -hmm. and i think this is uh, a way uh, that most of us uh, learn and progress and uh, you know equip itself with tools and uh, solution for yeah. uh, new projects yeah uh, yeah and talking about this progression that you you you, you mentioned um I'm interested to you know to 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 hear a bit about um, about your progression to lead lead data scientist that you are uh, right now. Uh, can you can you tell me a bit more about uh, you know how how did you get into data science and eventually how did you get into being a lead data scientist? Yeah, so I think there are you know two or three threads that led to this. I, sometimes I'm joking, uh, saying that uh, 20 years ago, it's, I'm joking, but actually it's real. Uh, for like 20 years ago, I was in a small group that uh, was doing machine learning without knowing that there is a <laughs> word for this at that point. Uh, at that time, we are just, uh, you know, doing our regular stuff. Uh, uh, personally, I was in a postdoc at Tokyo University, mm -hmm. in the Faculty of Nuclear Engineering, and uh, mm -hmm. the, the problem then, it was very simple. Uh, they had this uh, piping for the pressures, the water reactors, uh, water uh, cooling system and they, they were having uh, these you know problems with uh, the, the piping that uh, had uh, cracks and when the crack uh, developed uh, sometimes the you know could have uh, uh, could happen the nuclear accident so it was quite serious and mm -hmm. uh, so they tried to develop systems to detect apparition of uh, such cracks defects in the in tubing of that mm -hmm. uh, water reactors and uh, so at a certain moment they you know uh, they had to solve the problem when you have a signal and you want to understand first it, it's a crack, it's present. But more than this, uh, we tried, I mean, the group I was in, we tried to guess the geometry of the defect. And so, the, you know, one, one of the approach was to uh, do a lot of simulations uh, where you start up with the uh, geometry of the defect. Uh, as you know, detailing the geometry of your uh, mm -hmm. uh, experimental setup. And uh, this was done to, you know, supplement what you can do, like uh, with uh, manufactured uh, defects and also mm -hmm. experimental mm -hmm. uh, uh, signals you pick up in the, in the real uh, setup. And so uh, we are training a neural network. And uh, if you must understand, so at that time, training in neural network took like two or three days for just a few hundred cases. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, uh, the neural network was written in uh, Fortran. Oh, beautiful language. <laughs> as well as our simulation code. So uh, preparing the data means run simulation, and the simulation took maybe one week or uh, 10 days. Mm -hmm. And then you had like two or three days to uh, use the simulation to train a neural network to learn 
ah. something which is now so uh, simple, mm -hmm. the mapping between the signal and the geometry of the defect. You know? So mm -hmm. it's, you know, sounds like, ah, but this is very simple. It's just uh, uh, something that uh, you'll do now with CNN. Well, there were no CNN or maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, or the, tool, the tooling know? has changed, that's for sure. Yeah. And so, but, you know, uh, uh, this was uh, like 20 years ago. So I, mm -hmm. I would say that I was uh, always uh, curious and I, I, I was publishing a bit uh, in that time actually until recently on uh, application of what we call then artificial intelligence, we call now neural networks or machine learning uh, in solving inverse problems in uh, non traffic testing. But this is something that, uh, you know, it was there in the background. Uh, only recently I started to, you know, uh, feel a lot of curiosity around uh, application in data science, it started actually like kind of challenge because uh, one colleague from our data discipline invited me to some of their say, professional uh, uh, internal uh, conferences. And it was a presentation about data science, but it was uh, old, uh, it was like three or four years ago. It was the presentation made by a person that uh, had no idea what data science means. And uh, I say, okay, let me, uh, in the next them. presentation yeah. <laughs> and I just set up you know in like two months I have to make a presentation about applying uh, uh, using R for data science and at that time I didn't know uh, any R I mean I just it just happened that I knew about uh, this but uh, I, I was not written maybe at that time I didn't read um, any line in R and mm -hmm. I had uh, you know uh, just a few ideas of what uh, data science means and here it is, we, you know, two months until I need to make a presentation uh, in a very serious group. And uh, so I was lost. So what I can do? So basically two, two months <laughs> I was studying every day. I remember that I was in uh, my, uh, you know, uh, regular uh, annual leave with my family somewhere mm -hmm. on the Black Sea, uh, <laughs> in a Black Sea resort. And, uh, you know, everyone had... Uh, was having his regular, you know, holiday, you know, like going swimming and so on. And I was spending nights studying art. You know, so it was very funny. Uh, but I, and, uh, at the end, I made up, uh, you know, actually fulfilled the challenge. And uh, I was able to do a decent, uh, no, rather decent presentation. But by that time, I was, uh, I, I had discovered Kaggle. And I was starting to, you know, learn. Uh, because when I started, uh, you know, to learn about R, I was just uh, looking for information everywhere, like in KD Nuggets or mm -hmm. uh, all kind of sites. I don't remember now. <laughs> and at, at that time, when you were, uh, you know, looking and learning and learning R, learning data science, yeah. uh, at that time you were uh, you were managing software projects. Is that uh, right? Yes, I was a project manager actually, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, yeah, so as you can imagine, as a project manager, you don't have uh, a lot of time. So yeah. you think about project managers that, you know, they are not doing enough. <laughs> they are not doing anything. So well, and, uh, actually, there is a secret. Uh, if you do your work well, it appears that you are not doing nothing. So uh, you are mm -hmm. not doing anything. So uh, I, I guess I was a good project manager because, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, people, uh, I think it was quite happy in my projects. Uh, they... I think this is the best uh, definition of a good project manager. Say that you'll have to make things uh, to look so natural and everything, uh, you know, is going smoothly and, uh, uh, you know. Make yourself obsolete, right? right? Yeah. There is, there is uh, you know, a population in the larger project management population that uh, will create constant crises so that they can solve them. And people, you know, tend to say, ah, this is the guy who solved that crisis. But the problem is that he's the guy who created the crisis as well. So I try to avoid this. And uh, so, as you can imagine, I didn't have so much time. That's why mm -hmm. most my, uh, uh, most my uh, Kegel activity uh, at that time was, uh, uh, I will say, by night. So I, I thought uh, about my, myself that I am a project manager by day and uh, a Kegler by night. It was like two... Uh, three years, two years ago, and it was this was the reality because uh, I kept myself uh, busy so that the project would go smoothly on my day job, mm -hmm. uh, while I developed my knowledge in uh, data science and uh, being on Kaggle, I started to do 
uh, quite a bit of machine learning. But at that time, uh, I think also in my company, people uh, were starting to get uh, interested in uh, data science. And uh, what I did, it was more than two years ago, I started a kind of uh, different project. At that time, we didn't have, uh, well, we had some projects uh, in the data science, but we didn't uh, uh, you know, consider that uh, this is uh, data science by the way. Mm -hmm. We saw that there. Okay, it's a you know, uh, it's a project. It's a project uh, development project, and uh, yeah, it has some uh, machine learning in it, or uh, you know, some information processing in it. So and that's it. But so it was this you know interest, and so we started you know, like we had a lot of professional communities in Andava. We started mm -hmm. also data science community. Mm -hmm. When we started, you know, to invite people to have. Uh, like the presentations with a certain technical topic or even a project topic, we had this. And so I, you know, started also this activity. And I was not, I mean, it's not like uh, I had uh, many presentations, but I tried to invite people to have this presentation internally and uh, sometimes, or sometimes also uh, external people. And so to create this momentum, uh, you know, not in a certain place, because in that way it's, uh, a lot of uh, countries uh, uh, yeah. in Europe and uh, South America as well. And I know I'm speaking only about the development uh, centers, but so this presence was, you know, almost everywhere. People who were interested and tried to learn. So I wanted to create this internal community so that we can also learn from each other and, uh, uh, you know, kind to aggregate some structure before having mm -hmm. uh, a, pre uh, say, a formal uh, organization so mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. there was not a data discipline at that time you know, for example but most of the time i was learning outside uh, the company and i think about uh, two years ago i was really very active on Kaggle. i started to do also competition i'm not very successful in competitions so i will say that uh, i'm not a good uh, data scientist from uh, computational uh, predictive modeling point of view, and uh, there are people arguing that uh, it's not so relevant. I would say that it's extremely relevant. It's very important uh, for not only for your status, but actually this shows your level of uh, knowledge. Uh, if you problem have, solving, right? Like finding, yes. finding yes. problems with uh, existing solutions. I think yeah. that's a, like, even if this half a percent is not important, and yeah, like usually it's, it's not that important, um, I mean, it depends on the business, of course, because sometimes it could be huge. I will put it like this. So, uh, let's say the, the most important way that I learn uh, new things in data science or machine learning specifically is when I try to compete in competitions. Even if I didn't get a very high rank, so because I, I have just a, a, a few uh, low rank medals there, the effort you put to solve, try to solve a problem, typically quite complex problem, in a very short time, while competing with others, this is a way to accelerate your learning curve. And uh, of course, at a certain moment, I felt that I, you know, I, uh, I reached a certain plateau. I was mm -hmm. not progressing, so then I say, okay, what's missing? So I go back and started to learn like I was learning when, you know, preparing my, uh, to defend my PhD. Uh, so I get to, you know, to, to learn from Coursera. And also I uh, uh, started to read uh, more technical articles. I will not say that I, you know, I, I don't think that I can mention a book from which I learn a lot. But uh, I learn a lot from uh, uh, you know, Coursera books. Uh, yeah, and uh, a lot from... Uh, uh, technical papers on mm, internet. Mm -hmm. So I, also articles as well. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. so so you were uh, so you were uh, learning during those times, um, competing as well, and uh, at the same time you were uh, progressing at uh, or sort of uh, changing your role at uh, at Endava. Yeah, at a certain moment, I you know I I just switched and. Uh, uh, I stopped uh, working as a project manager in projects and I started to work uh, what I called at that time a data scientist. And I, it is still my uh, uh, my job now. And uh, yeah, so I made the transition some time ago. And uh, since then I 
sometimes, you know, it's a bit frustrating because I see projects that uh, will, you know, uh, uh, I I feel sometimes that I need to be silent when, you know, there is a project management uh, issue there. So mm -hmm. I try to, uh, you know, just support the existing project manager, but it's fine. So, so, so let's, 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 let's talk about that, about, um, you know, the, the, the situation uh, and, and your sort of day to day, like what the, the average day uh, that you have uh, today as a, as a lead data scientist. So um, could you tell me, you know, yeah, how it, how it looks like and sort of like the, maybe the split between, you know, the coding and, and the managing and do you actually, you know, do a lot of managing this, these days or it's more technical, all this uh, stuff about that. Uh, uh, in Antava, as I said, we are uh, actually, uh, uh, yeah, so most of the time we do have this uh, role, which is uh, in the discipline, uh, where uh, depending on your uh, seniority, you'll also have some management roles, mm -hmm. uh, but also in the project. And in the project, so for example, in the current project, I'm not leading the team, I'm just a part of the team. So... As I said, I'm part of a multifunctional uh, team, and uh, in each team we'll have, uh, you know, uh, uh, technical governance, which will, uh, it could be uh, an architect, or and as well as management uh, type of governance, and that will be a project manager, a program manager, and so on. So my role it's now just uh, to develop uh, solutions. So I, I work on the proof of concepts, and uh, then I work side by side with the team to implement that proof of concept inside the current application. So I had to, you know, redevelop my uh, development uh, <laughs> skills as well. Mm -hmm. uh, because, yeah, from the POC to uh, writing code that it's production ready, it's... Uh, it's uh, a journey. Not, yeah, it's... Uh, so I was there actually, so not problem. I, I mean, I can recognize easily when my code is crap. Uh, so it's not a production ready quality. That's, that's a good thing where, um, you know, say, I, I, I feel that um, when, once you start looking at your code from half a year ago and it doesn't look that bad, like you think it's pretty good actually, that it means that you haven't really progressed that much, like at least in my case. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, like it's I, a very good, uh, it's very nice way to put it, yeah. Uh, so, especially when uh, I work you know, as a data scientist, I feel that when you are writing uh, code, because you'll have to write code to fast prototyping and uh, just to understand the problem, then you know, you should know that this code should be completely uh, written because uh, sometimes in larger uh, organizations and teams, you'll have, uh, you know, different people doing this so you'll have maybe a team of data scientists that will just write the poc level code and then a uh, you know, bunch of uh, uh, machine learning engineers which will just pick up these and uh, rewrite the code to be production rate and uh, i could have done this probably also uh, in my current role or uh, in other projects but actually i didn't want to do it so i wanted to be part of the also the team that it's also implementing for production because you learn a lot about this mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so we had for example projects when we had a very tight de deadline i'm talking about uh, data science projects and uh, there was no time actually to rewrite a lot so i had to start also my explorator the uh, code to uh, write it uh, from the start as modularly as possible so that uh, it will be uh, easier to, to push. integrate. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so, uh, because you are also talking about the journey, I try actually to put myself in the, you know, uh, not very comfortable spot because also on my day-to-day uh, -day job, not only on my uh, competitive uh, or Kangler experience, I wanted to be on a fast learning curve and also able to cover let's say the entire uh, life cycle of the uh, product development from early investigation to writing mm -hmm. code, which is production rate. And I, I would not say that uh, I did this with a lot of success, but uh, not being uh, ready, I mean, not sitting comfortable and say, okay, I don't have anything to learn. It's also a good thing, I will say. Because in a moment we'll say, okay, now I'm done. So I progress <laughs> enough so I can stop, uh, rest and... Uh, so probably uh, does this, does this already, you think? 
Sorry? The, does this moment ever come, you think? Uh, you know, if you get tired, probably you'll come. But uh, at that <laughs> point, you're probably, you know, not fitting the role anymore. So uh, if I can compress in just a few words what I think should be, you know, uh, data scientist. So you'll have to keep learning and actually put yourself much as possible in the roles or uh, in that environment where you can continuously learn from uh, various uh, say professional experiences, by like being active in communities, you can learn a lot. And uh, as I said, you can bring that experience uh, in your uh, uh, projects as well. And uh, of course, it's also help uh, the other way around. So let's say the organization, the uh, robustness of the code that you're writing to be production ready can help you also in uh, competitive mm -hmm. uh, predictive modeling because you it push you to i mean it helps you to to write more uh, robust code and, uh, and reusable yes right? that, that 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 helps a lot uh, especially when uh, you have such uh, tight deadlines uh, like mm -hmm. in the current competition i'm working now <laughs> what, what, which one is that i try to do a decent uh, stand in the deep fake competition oh that one but uh -huh. it's, yeah it's I will probably be in the second uh, half or something, but it is what it is. No, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a difficult one. Like I was thinking about that competition actually. And, um, you know, like, uh, I'm, I'm wondering whether the end solution, like you got to create something, um, that is a very good, um, you know, discriminator, you know, telling whether it's a fake or, or not fake. Um, you know, and I'm wondering, you know, does it really change things or does it just build, you know, you just build a better discriminator and somebody's going to just train a better generator for those yeah, things. So uh, th this is a never ending uh, problem is like, exactly, you know, right? uh, the solution to, to win the, this battle, it will be the solution to that the opponent will use to win the next battle. So yeah. the arm race that will never stop. Yeah. And eventually, uh, uh, I don't think that uh, somebody can say today uh, how this uh, will progress in the next year uh, because yeah. the advances of technologies are used by both uh, sides. True. Well, like what, what, I, what I was thinking was that potentially, you know, like um, just a solution is not in building better discriminator. I, I have no idea what it is. Maybe it is some sort of, uh, you know, hashing like the, uh, you know, just, just to know and have the trace of, of the data, trace of the image from, from its creation with some, you know, some signatures or some, I don't know, like blockchain based. Thing. I'm not, you know, like I'm just bubbling mostly now, but I, uh, well, I, I guess what, I, what I'm trying to express is that, you know, it feels that the solution to, to fake, you know, to fake images, to fake deep fakes is not in creating a better discriminator. Uh, I guess uh, that's so uh, because now you are, uh, because you are, you are doing this, you probably uh, just uh, feed the arm race. And, mm -hmm. uh, you'll continue. But yeah, uh, as I said, I'm not uh, in the position to comment on this too much because uh, I am not in a decent uh, place right now, and probably will not be <laughs> until <laughs> the competition ends in uh, two days. But I really enjoy, you know, uh, it's. Uh, uh, sometimes it feels like you're in a hackathon and uh, sometimes uh, you feel lost and uh, what you can do, you just go and uh, look for another new problem and uh, write an exploratory data analysis to just to warm up and then uh, uh, if you see something interesting, you'll start to compete and uh, that's it. I mean, yeah. uh, this is something uh, uh, that uh, keeps you busy and I think you know, keeping you busy while trying to solve uh, difficult problems is a very good way to uh, cope also with the current conditions when, uh, you know, a lot of people now should be at home. So That is true. That is true. Use this, uh, use this as an opportunity to learn. And, exactly. Uh, to, to develop new skills. I think it's a very uh, uh, good uh, approach. Yeah, there is. There is. Yeah, I, th I think it's, 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 a, it's a perfect moment for that. Like if you ever had needed more time, you know, that's, you know, likely it's, it's, it's a good moment. Um, uh, but like speaking about those, you, you mentioned, um, uh, you mentioned that this putting yourself in an uncomfortable uh, position in order to learn, uh, you know, is one of the, the, the tricks, the methods that you, you know, you do for, uh, you know, to, to learn. Of course, Kaggle uh, is, is one of the, you know, I guess, implementations of that. Um, 
putting yourself on projects where um, you're a bit out of depth uh, at work is is another. So say you're great at one part of uh, of the life cycle, and then you put yourself on a production side where maybe you're not as um, you know you're not as experienced. So that's a, that's a, another way. Uh, do you have any other um, sort of um, you know methods or, or tricks to uh, keep yourself um, you know keep yourself sort of out of depth at all times to learn more? Yeah, so I uh, I also try to explore and uh, learn about uh, domains that uh, are new for me in the data science or machine learning. Uh, not all the time with a very good uh, uh, success, but you know. Uh, sometimes I'm, you know, just scratching a bit uh, in one direction, and uh, yeah, so I feel uh, comfortable. Maybe I just go and uh, study something else, and then I return, and now with uh, more energy and the determination. And mm-hmm. some, uh, uh, so of course there were moments, uh, you know, in the past when I had no clue about, uh, for example, uh, convolution neural networks, or I don't know about uh, using a certain algorithm. So Sometime, you know, as a method to approach a problem, I will try for uh, one or two days and then uh, probably seeing that I don't progress, I will just mm. uh, wait a bit, uh, work on something different, and then I will return. And mm-hmm. I just discovered that uh, this, you know, uh, uh, apparently resting period I was not doing uh, helps a lot because uh, uh, on the background I was still thinking about processing uh, yeah yeah and processing the information that uh, you know uh, initially uh, look very uh, difficult to digest and uh, when i just returned i realized that i was progressing uh, uh, because i was uh, as i said pro- still processing that information so and structure, sometimes structure it's really yeah. helping to you, mm-hmm. if you not only you know for example you focus on a problem but you are also keeping some other problems on the background mm. and uh, it's like uh, when you get a bit uh, tired of one and uh, mm-hmm. you feel like resting, so you have the other one to switch, and uh, then uh, sometimes you also progress a lot like this, you know, and uh, it happens to me. Right now, I have several <laughs> projects in parallel. Mm-hmm. Uh, it really helps me because. Uh, uh, as I said, when I get tired of one, I will just... So so you sort of keep your motivation, like whenever you get bored, sort of, or tired, or you hit the plateau, you just switch to another one, and then you get yeah, motivation. I, I'm not giving up. Uh, I'm just, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, uh, phasing up a bit, and then I'll return with more energy. And, mm, uh, I like that. Is, yeah, um, I like that. Uh-huh. Uh, I think I'm, I'm going to use... I'm stubborn. I'm never giving up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um Okay, so like we, you know, so we talked a bit about the the methods, you know, the methods you're using to, uh, you know, keep yourself motivated and learn uh, new things. Uh, But we haven't really spoken about, um, you know, those things, like the core skills that you think are um, important to, uh, you know, to your, to your, uh, your job right now. And and generally, I guess, to, uh, you know, uh, getting, uh, you know, progressing in your data science career. What do you think are, um, you know, those core uh, skills and um, yeah, that, that, that make a difference. Uh, So uh, did I mention that I, uh, sometimes in the past, I got a PhD in uh, uh, by the way, the computation electromagnetics. So oh, I think you did not mention that. me a lot now. <laughs> now, yeah, so it, it, this is helpful because I had to learn a lot of uh, what we are calling them uh, numerical methods. It was called mm-hmm. uh, them. It was just basically algorithmics uh, mm-hmm. for solving, for example, uh, large scale partial uh, equations, yeah, like equations derivative generated equation. uh, linear or non linear systems with. Uh, sparse matrices and so on. And so uh-huh. uh, learning all that uh, mathematical uh, methodology that, and formulation, you know, it helps me because now, you know, uh, learning about uh, um, numerical methods that we are using to build uh, uh, machine learning solution, uh, it's not, you know, for some guys, it looks, oh my God, it's a lot of math. Actually, it's not no. too much mm-hmm. math uh, if I'm uh, looking back. And uh, so having everything uh, there in the background, uh, well, uh, waiting to be uh, reused, uh, it's really uh, uh, helping a lot. So now if I'm reading about the inner implementation of some algorithms, I do have the right background so that 
I will not have to, you know, to go and say, oh, what, what, uh, what means uh, you know, partial derivative uh, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so this is helpful. And one thing that it's probably helping me, or, or I don't know, it's, uh, I, I always, uh, when I uh, done something, I, I felt that uh, in order to understand how something works, I need it. I really need to see it. So uh, even, you know, when I try now to understand, okay, how this simple algorithm in uh, 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 machine learning is working, I try to build up something to visualize. Okay, so let's see how uh, uh, decision trees are working, uh, you know, in our depth. So I try to visualize this. So this is also helping because mm -hmm. uh, I was always interested not only in uh, doing, you know, what I call numerical methods, but also in the visualization. Uh, but so I, I try to use one to uh, to help with the other. So uh, by the way, I, I actually did some uh, nice visualization for uh, not only for decision tree, but also for uh, my face or, yeah. Uh, so we have uh, so we have the first thing is understanding the mathematical part is it, it's helpful. Uh, the second one is uh, instead of just reading about something, try to really visualize it and see yeah. how things work. So those would be yeah. Two, two. And uh, the the way that I'm uh, you know uh, I progress the way I used to progress uh, my, mostly it was okay. So uh, this is but uh, let's try to use it with a certain uh, problem. And so this I, uh, and uh, so if you are asking, okay, what tools I'm using, I don't have a list. Mm -hmm. So in early days, you know, like uh, I, I will say, okay, I was using R and I use uh, a lot of uh, deployer and a lot of uh, uh, GG plots and whatever, mm -hmm. but now, uh, you know, for any, uh, of course, I have a basic uh, tool set that I'm using for NLP, right? So, uh, but sometimes I have to switch. So I'm using, for example, for NLP, I'm using a lot of uh, NLPK and uh, uh, Spacey and uh, uh, Jensen. Jensen as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. And usually I just combine. But, you know, for example, now for Deepfake, I, I use... Uh, uh, I started to use PyTorch. I, I was not using too much in the past. I was mostly using uh, a Keras uh, mm -hmm. interface of uh, TensorFlow. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, then uh, working in uh, about, it's less about, uh, let's say, algorithms or uh, tools, but uh, working in uh, cloud, I had to get familiar with, uh, you know, cloud-based tools. Last year I was, you know, never used before, maybe SageMaker, at a certain mm -hmm. moment last year, I was using every day, so, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I was quite a bit fun because, you know, if you, for example, have to uh, prototype fast in a small project, and uh, I would say a low, uh, you know, slow-paced uh, project, I could, uh, uh, you know, work with uh, DevOps and ask him to mount uh, different uh, EC2 uh, for each new experiment I wanted to do. It was easy, but uh, then when I had a very fast-paced project, SageMaker was, you know, in the same eco uh, uh, AWS ecosystem, nice. uh, the right mm -hmm. solution, because I could do it uh, on the spot, you know. I tried, mm -hmm. I start with uh, a small machine, and then if I need to run mm -hmm. a full experiment, I just... You just change uh, the, yeah. the Docker that is behind it and environment. Yeah. And it up. Yeah, uh, switch yeah. to a larger machine and uh, mm -hmm. using the same code and so on. And uh, it's really helpful, you know, uh, to, uh, depending of course on the environment, uh, uh, to be able to use uh, tools that can uh, uh, accelerate your process. Uh, in the same time, you need to be ready uh, for projects when you don't have this uh, solution. And sometimes I had uh, uh, in some uh, project a lot of constraints, uh, although I had the uh, very good prepared solution that I could use. So mm -hmm. because of the constraints, for example, I was missing libraries or mm -hmm. I had to restrict to a certain uh, uh, memory uh, amount and so So I had to remember the early days when I was programming in Fortran and uh, when we were reusing uh, variables because we didn't uh, 
I mean, we could not afford to fit in the memory uh, <laughs> no. variable for each purpose. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's good when you know uh, you can have this uh, uh, flexibility to go from uh, using uh, the newest tools uh, in a totally elastic environment <laughs> when you just uh, expand as much as you want and actually switch from these to. Uh, uh, project when you have a lot of constraints mm-hmm. uh, where you need to be very conscious and uh, you know uh, apply that uh, uh, all techniques uh, to reduce memory mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so sometimes Just a different uh, set of problems yeah and uh, yeah so on Kaggle now uh, nowadays it's happening this as well so you have these uh, new competitions where they put also memory and uh, runtime constraint mm. Yeah, and uh, so it's that's good. That's uh, good because I, I, I think you know at at, at at some point, not that it's it's bad. It's just a different competition. But um, you know, like having an option to train it on a multi G, multi GPU setup, yeah. um, you know, with uh, how many models you want, how many test time augmentations you want, you know, it it just felt a bit um, you know, like it's not it's not a not the same competition for, you know, for... Uh, but it's also something uh, which is useful for the people that are to start to learn uh, in this environment. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a good education because, you know, in, uh, when you're developing a solution for uh, a client and uh, this solution should uh, maybe work in production for, yeah. I don't know, years, uh, it's not fair to uh, develop something uh, that uh, will require a lot of resources like GPUs or multiple GPUs uh, when you can have build a solution that uh, uh, will uh, solve the same problem and uh, probably with the same uh, accuracy with yeah. uh, uh, lower uh, uh, resources. That is sometimes true. this is, you know, you need to be honest about it and uh, not use uh, the client as a way to, you know, experiment uh, with uh, new technologies. And sometimes it's just, uh, you know, you have a budget and you need to do the best uh, you can. This constraint. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, typically, I would say, uh, for the uh, uh, real, uh, uh, you know, uh, projects, I mean, uh, commercial projects, uh, you'll always have a, a budget constraint or True. you need to be aware. And uh, so from this point of view, what they are doing now in Thailand, it's a good thing because we, they are educating the people in the right uh, direction. So, they, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. so uh, t- talking about this, like uh, as, as we're, uh, you know, getting closer to the, to the end of this interview, uh, you know, you said educating, Kago is educating people. Uh, if you were to educate, you know, data scientists of today or people getting into the field or uh, already working, but more, <laughs> Uh, towards the beginning of their uh, careers, um, what would you advise them to learn? Um, you know, both on the side of, uh, of the technical skills, some of them you mentioned already, but maybe also on the side of, uh, you know, coming from a person with so much experience in, you know, project management and, uh, you know, working in, in larger organizations. Uh, are there any things that you would like to, uh, you know, mention here in terms of uh, learning that ha- can have a yeah. big impact on, on the career? Of, of data scientists? Uh, one thing, and uh, uh, let me mention here that uh, recently I'm also uh, conducting a series of trainings internally so that uh, mm. we enhance uh, our uh, capability of data science. Uh, and uh, I mentioned this because one thing that I insist is it's very important for people. Uh, you know, now uh, everyone wants to learn the newest uh, solutions and maybe the, you know, uh, most complicated, to use the most complicated uh, uh, architecture for deep learning. Sometimes this will uh, bring a very high cost. So uh, what I uh, include in my training, it's start with the basics. Understand how a very simple algorithm is working. And when you have a problem, try a simple algorithm, try a simple solution. Then based on your initial, uh, you know, uh, uh, results from this baseline, you need to go and uh, take a decision. Okay, for this, with the amount of data I have and uh, uh, errors that I saw with uh, this very simple ba- baseline. So obviously I need to go and uh, uh, pick up this. Maybe it could be a, a complex and uh, expensive uh, uh, solution, but uh, you always should uh, uh, 
a start uh, as simple as possible. And mastering the, you know, the basic algorithms, I think it's important. And when I'm saying mastering, is not uh, like being able to rewrite, but really understanding uh, the, the way that, yeah, the interns. Uh, again, understanding means uh, understanding. Okay, if I modify these parameter, what is really happening, and uh, uh, why the algorithm perform like this? So this is helping because it's also about uh, you know, for example, you have to explain to the business why you are taking this decision or not. It's good to understand, to really understand actually what you are doing, and not just applying something that you know from literature or from uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. these experiences that will work. Uh, because uh, you know, always uh, data science now and uh, machine learning will be more or less on the spot uh, from business perspective. They will say, okay, what they are doing these uh, you know magically or mysterious things. So uh, explaining, interpreting this, the results, uh, it's equally say important as building mm -hmm. a good solution and uh, uh, being able to to to, to gain the, uh, trust from the business. Uh, I think it's very important. But you can only do this if you are really understanding what you're doing and starting to build your knowledge based on something that uh, uh, it's easy to understand and then uh, building on top of this, getting to master more complicated things as you progress, uh, that will be, uh, I think, good both for your uh, uh, personal development and also for you know, uh, how you'll interact with the people when you're talking about uh, your work. And so, uh, mastering not only machine learning, but also all tools of the trade from data analysis and being able to uh, do a quality assessment on the data and improving the quality of the data and uh, doing, you know, being able and also being open to do all this tedious manual work around. And also visualization of the results, I think is very important. Not only, okay, I get this matrix, this is the result, Go for it. So being able uh, as well to not only to, to, not only to uh, develop models, but also uh, having, you know, your tool set, simple solution to uh, expose them to an API or... Uh, or a streamlet uh, or something like that. Yeah. Right? So having all these tools, I think it's important. And uh, if you have the foundation, so being able to do all the machine learning pipeline, not only the modeling, or not only the modeling doing deep learning, uh, then will help you to put in that uh, situation when uh, you'll also get more opportunities, right? So, mm -hmm. because if you are uh, ready and uh, you are able to uh, do the job, uh, you know, from uh, start to end, not only a part of it, then you'll, uh, you'll get more confidence and you'll get, uh, it will be easier to adapt them to every pro new project. Yeah, no, makes sense, makes sense. Also, yeah, like uh, even, you know, looking for, you know, new new projects, new positions, then of course, yeah, like like you could, you, because you could be, you could be at an organization where, you know, you're, you're actually in this small box where, you know, you're building those, the, the model for something or you're doing the, you know, the communication to the business or something. Um, and this is what you do and, and, and that's good, but then potentially you may want to switch, you may want to, you know, grow your role or, or just do something a bit different. And then, yeah, like understanding the entire pipeline feels absolutely crucial. Yeah. Um, any, any final thoughts that you would like to, uh, you know, share, share with, uh, listeners regarding the learning or anything, you know, anything else data science, uh, or machine learning related? I'll turn your question into a joke. So uh, <laughs> there is no final, so we'll continue. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So uh, yeah, I think I think that's that's good. That's a that's a good one. Where um, we should um, yeah we we as data scientists should remember I, that. I I'll keep learning. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Gabriel. And um, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Have a great day and stay healthy. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening and till next time on Machine Learning That Works, a podcast hosted by Neptune AI.